Well, hey guys, you join me from the back of the E53 4.6 IS X5. And I'm in the back because I'm gonna be installing a reverse camera today. Now, I'm a bit of a reverse camera nerd. I really like the cool things that are coming out from, well, all the manufacturers with those 360 cams and the cool stuff that they do. In fact, I like them so much that I retrofitted a 360 cam to my old E53 back in 2017 or 2018. And I actually did a review on that on the channel, which I'll put a link to up in the corner, whichever corner it is. Uh, please go and check it out because that was a Chinese 360 degree panoramic camera that worked really well with the E53 and I did really really like it and when we first got this car I'm like I'm gonna get another one um, however I've sort of and I hope you guys don't mind but because I've had that camera before I wanted to try something different and also this is gonna be much easier to install um, what I've ended up finding whilst I'm browsing all the eBay and Amazon options I found this camera from a Toto and I'm probably not pronouncing it right they're the only company I've seen doing it and what it does it generates a bird's-eye view of the camera sorry a bird's-eye view of the car somehow and then makes that image appear around the vehicle all with only using one rear camera. Now, I'll try and overlay an image of what I've seen, or at least some footage of what I've seen, uh, because it's almost a little bit too good to be true. Because if this works, this is gonna be the easiest way you could ever install a panoramic camera system. Um, now, let me just give you a quick rundown on what you get in the box. These are, I can't even remember what I paid for. I think it was around 200 Aussie. It was just before Christmas I ordered it, you know, when you're drinking and clicking buy it now on way too many things. Um, but it was, it, it was sub $200, so it was pretty cheap. It was much cheaper than the old camera that I had. And you get everything in this box. So you get the brain of the system. Now, on my old 360 camera system, it had a similar size metal box. And it was actually like a whole like an Android processor going on in there. Like it's a full on computer in this box and having a quick look through the instruction manual, which is beefy, it appears to be the same. So it has got quite a lot of menus and user settings and calibration options, which we will have a play with later on in the video. You obviously get the camera. Um, now these are using sort of a standard reverse camera type four pin connector. Uh, however, I do know, well, from reading the book just then, this system will only work with that specific camera. And that's because it needs to know exactly how much warp it gets on the lens to project the image around the car that it's going to create. Uh, you get two wiring or two main wiring harnesses. Uh, they supply this one, which is like a typical Chinese Android plug. Uh, and it's got a full harness, which obviously we don't need. I don't know why they give us that, but this is the main harness for the unit. So that will plug into the box. We have four connectors for, well, actually, just so you know, being a bit blase, but it does come with this plug here. So actually I'll cut off this harness, wire that into the car, and then this will actually be plug and play into the vehicle. But we basically just need uh, earth, constant power. The white wire is the signal from the reverse lights. I'm going to, so you can actually, with a with an X5, you can actually make it so that when you push PDC, the camera will come up. But because of the way this camera functions, I'm gonna have it so that it'll only come up in reverse because you need to be in reverse for it to create the image. You need to be reversing. So we'll hook it up to the reverse light, see how it goes. And then of course, we've just got accessory switch power. So that's all stuff I can get from the harness at the front of the vehicle. It'll be nice and easy to connect. And we do have a one long wire that needs to go all the way to the back of the car. So. If you had a bit of a look into putting a camera on an E53, there are quite a few options with cheap cameras you can get. And I personally like the ones that go in the number plate light. That's how I've done the one on my E92. They're nice clean installs. The thing is, they offset the camera. And because of the way we're gonna be warping the image, that's not ideal. We really want the camera in the middle. Uh, and the other thing is, when I bought one of those for my old E53, which was the original camera I was gonna use, uh, it didn't fit properly. And I remember spending hours running wires through and then I never got it to work. So I just sort of dismissed it straight away. The where, now with my old 360 camera, I did try lots of positions because it would be nice if you could run it there and it'd just be up out of the way. But the best way I got my old 360 camera to work was to mount the reversing camera right here. Now, unfortunately, I've got a bit of a dent to contend with, but I'm sure we'll be able to sort something out. But the camera's gonna be mounted there and I'm gonna run the wire through a hole behind the number plate. And obviously we'll reseal that. And I can't remember how this works. From memory, yeah, there it is. And we'll run the wire through there and then that'll go into the boot all the way down to the front and into the head unit. Now, I only did this stereo install a couple of weeks ago and I'll put a link to that as well below. Um, and I'm gonna basically use the same path that I routed the stereo cable to route this uh, camera cable. Um, so I'm not gonna film the whole thing because it is quite a in-depth job to pull it all apart, but I'm gonna give you an update once I've got the camera mounted and we're powering the unit up in the front of the car for the first time. So I'll see you guys shortly. 
and just like that, it's done. Okay, now I have got to adjust the number plate because the number plate was just a little bit too high, but that's basically where the camera is going to live forever. Now, I thought on my old car, I might have drilled a hole here to get through, but this tailgate is like, a, it's got like three, three different sheets of metal. So if you drill just here, you end up in a cavity that you can't actually get the wire through. Um, so all I've done for now, don't judge me, is just tucked it up there, but if I can sort of straighten it a bit, then again, you can't really see it when it's open, so who knows, it'll probably stay like that. So the wire then feeds through this little cable runner, and I did try and get some pictures of how it was done whilst it was apart. Hopefully I can overlay it now. But then basically goes through the boot, you can't even see it, and all the way to the front. Actually, just so you know, we've tucked it through that little cavity there. You can get to that cavity if you just take this bolster off. Now, I'm really sorry about the light. We just, we just don't have good light in the shed at the moment. Uh, the wire then runs under there. Doo -doo -doo. All the way down the front, across and up into here. So that is actually the reverse camera connection. Now, again, light is just a killer. I might go outside, actually. But I do want to power it up before we take it out. I just want to make sure it powers up. All I've done, I've tapped into the same power sources we use for the iBus and have also added an accessory. Now these Extrons units, they do actually have all the power outputs we needed. So I could have just connected it to them, but I've just connected it to power on the car for now. This white wire, you could actually use that to trigger the reverse camera to turn on from the unit. Like if I push PDC, uh, where is it? There's an output somewhere. I just saw it, it was like reverse camera power. Cam power, there it is. So if I connected it to that, when I hit PDC on the car, it would actually turn the reverse camera on. But considering the type of camera this is, I only want it to come on when we put it in reverse. So running it off the reverse light is gonna be fine. Now that is the unit just there. And I'm just gonna chuck this mess in its hole for now and just see if it all powers up. That is the infrared receiver to do the setup. Now if I turn the ignition on, and put it in reverse, oh, which I can't do. Hang on, I'm gonna use the GoPro stick. There it is, and there it is. Interesting. Uh, now I did, I was playing with this the other day. Oh, come back. That is, I need to set that up. That's it. Um, that's something that the iBus app does. I'm just gonna turn PDC off. The PDC screen still there, uh, but that is the camera. That's interesting. So it looks like we have. Oh, I'm gonna have to get this all set up, but essentially the camera is working. All right, what I might do is we'll head outside, just so we got some better light, and you might be able to actually see what's going on, and then we'll work out what we got to do to actually get it set up because there is that big mat for the calibration. Huh. Well, it all worked. I wonder what. What's the remote? Sorry, guys. I'm playing. Does it have different modes? It's very direct. What is that looking? Oh, no, what is, you know what it is. <laughs> I'm getting confused. It's because the tailgate's open. Muppet. So with it shut, that should give us a bit better angle of what we're doing. There it is. That looks a bit more like a reverse camera. All right, let's get it outside and see if we can calibrate it. All right, so I just moved the car around to get some light in and hopefully you can see everything okay. But we have the remote that comes with it. I've just I've tucked all the unit in now. We've just got the sensor out. Now you only need to see the sensor when you're doing the calibration, but let's have a quick look through the menus on this thing and see if we can work out the way to do it. And it's a shame it's raining because I can't get the calibration mat, mat, mat wet. So basically we've got panoramic position, left-hand drive, right-hand drive, reversing aid. I'll leave it off for now. We'll have a play with it a bit later. Vehicle information, let's see what's in there. Okay, it's already set to SUV. Vehicle width, vehicle width and vehicle length. Okay, now let's see if I can work out the dimensions of the X5. I'm just gonna pause you guys for a second. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see it, but there Google has told me that the car is 4.66 long and 1.87 wide. So we need to put that in because it uses this information to generate an image over the picture that it creates. I'm, I just I can't believe this is gonna do what it says on the can. 
and so it's 1870 wide and we want 466 okay so that's the car width set width set video cropping what's that adjust the number one two three and four to confirm the final video area status description select state blue editing state red don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up but there is a grid across there okay so I can see that we're sort of cutting off that edge at the moment. Okay, now that will level out that. I think that's going to be fine. So we're pretty even at what we're looking at, and we're not looking at too much wasted space. I might move number four over a bit, actually. Just that one. We'll move it over. And that should center the tow bar nicely in the image, I think. It, where it's a bit of an issue because the tailgate was damage where I've mounted the camera so we're not perfectly aligned but hopefully that will actually sort out the alignment of the physical position so we are all good there output parameters what's that okay brightness contrast yeah I'm just gonna leave it standard for now and we'll play with it once we're actually outside in the light and I also want to see what it's like at night time as well image calibration so this is the part where i need to get that big mat somewhere clean and s sort of flat so we can do this test i wonder if i can set it up in this space out here all right let's go and have a look and see if we're going to be able to do the calibration right now okay so i've got the mat the calibration mat which hopefully i can show you guys afterwards i'm trying to just quickly do it Ooh, I'm gonna have to. Come on. Oh, give me that. Okay. So let's see if it lets me calibrate. So if we go. Da -da, and we go. Doom, 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 doom. Calibration. It may error if it's not happy with what it can see. Oh, it says successful. Okay. Next. The calibration. If the cloth is not in the center of the image during the process of the image calibrating, please adjust by pressing up and down. I think the cloth is in the center. I think we're good. I'm just going to save it. All right. So let's see. We've just got to make sure we don't knock the mirror. Oh, she's so tight. I can't believe we managed to calibrate it there. So what it's supposed to do now that it's calibrated is it's supposed to oh, go home. Okay. So you see we have this image here. Now if I reverse... It should paint that image around the car. No, it's working. We're going, we're even going around a corner. That's crazy. And there we have it. We have a 360 degree image. And I've gone around a corner. Oh, I need to go and try it somewhere else. All right, let me go and get a better spot. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and imitate like a bit of a reverse park. And we'll just see what it does. So I'm a bit too far away from the edge of the road. And we'll go reverse. Okay, so that's the image. That's where I want to be. Let's go over to the edge. I'm coming in pretty close. Okay, so what? I hope you can see in the mirror. But there we have, and I've sort of, I don't know if you could tell on the camera, but I went over to the edge of the road, and you can see there that the wheels are getting pretty close. I'll try and drive off the road and see if it notices. 
So we're now about to go on the grass. We are now, the back wheel is just touching the grass. Holy shit, it works. Oh, there's a car coming. So that's it. That is the 360 bird's eye view, but with a single camera. I think it was gonna work that well. So you've got your normal reverse camera, but then if you're gonna do a reverse park, let's see, let's just keep reversing. Let's see if we can reverse into the yard. So there's the driveway. No. Look at this. It's painting the driveway. Well, it's not painting, but it's creating the image around the car. What? And I can just reverse down the driveway, looking at the camera. Oh, still gotta pay attention. I'm going fairly quick. Oh, oh, <laughs> but it is keeping up. That's interesting. So I'm guessing, looking at that, I'm guessing the G, the, the camera system has some sort of G sensor in it. In fact, I haven't installed it, but there was a pad to stick the box to something. I'm guessing I've got a hard mount. So it must be using a G sensor inside this box. to tell when the car's moving. All right, I need to hard mount that, which I will do, and we'll tidy everything back up. But yeah, if we just, that is sweet. Oh, and I did nearly, okay. I have sort of gone off the edge a little bit. So if I go a bit slower, the quality of the image is a bit nicer, instead of speed racer reversing. Let's go over to the other side. Now we're on the other side. It's working for parking up against the curb. That's going to be perfect. I'm pretty happy with that. It's not as cool as the full 360 cam that I had in my other X5, but that's still pretty handy for reverse parking and much, much easier to install. And that is way better. That is way, way better than just a normal reverse camera. Let's see what it does with the containers that are just coming up. Will it see them? Or are they too far out of the picture? Eh, too far out, let's get up close to the container. Oh, there you are, you can just see the container coming in to the virtual, it's not a virtual image, but it, I don't understand how it does it. How is it painting the container? Well, superimposing the container. Ah, and I have still got that feature as well. So that is iBus, and obviously when the PDC picks something up, I've got the bar display as well and I'm guessing the PDC is picking up the container. But we can see that. Sorry to dawdle a bit, I'm just I'm a bit fascinated by this. I'm gonna reverse up to the container and just see what the camera sees. So, I mean, the grass is probably a bit hard for it to read and make an image. What? PDC's not happy. Oh, we still haven't touched it yet. That's crazy. You can see that the car Oh, that might need some adjustment because I feel like we're really close. Let's see how close we are. We're pretty close. <laughs> PDC is going nuts. Ah, okay. So it must have to create the image every time you park. But that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's a cool little gadget for not too much money. Um, yeah, let me know if you've seen anything like this. I saw a video of it on... YouTube, um, which I probably put at the start of this video, and I was pretty stoked with it then. All right, so we have Dave. He's about to try it for his first time. I did show him briefly, but see if you find it easier to drive with. Okay. You're reversing fast. Is it gonna see the driveway? 
It is, is, yeah. There she is. How on earth? How? Oh man, that is weird. And then it keeps the picture there. So I can sort of... See, it doesn't have steering input, so it must just be all, using all G sensors to position the car. Yeah, I'm bizarre how... I'm surprised at how accurate the front wheels are. Oh, I did have to put the dimensions of the vehicle in. Ah. See, so I'm getting close over here. You're going to try and, like, emulate parking. Parallel it. See, so the front's coming round. But obviously this camera is nowhere near the front. No. The camera is... Obviously, there's only one camera. So the front wheel can't be that accurate. That's bizarre. Do you want to see... Use the camera, see how close it is? Yeah, I'm dead on the... Dead on the gravel. So that... This, that wheel... If that was a curve, I would have just curved that wheel there. But you can see... Well, you've, you've gone over the gravel. Yeah. That is... I was watching the front. Because I, I thought uh, the front would just be whack, to be fair. I thought they... Because it can't. There's no camera at the front. It can't... How? How can it... <laughs> how does it know what the front's doing? It really... If that was a... Instead of sort of a silhouette, if that was a proper picture of the car, yep. you would feel like you've got a proper 360... Bird's eye cam. ...camera there. That is crazy. Impressed? I can't work it out. That is really... <laughs> <clears throat> and... That's how I felt when I was in it before. I was like, this... How is it doing that? That's mental. It's pretty quick, too. Like, I get... I get the back bit, but as it stitches the picture together, it's still... There's not four cameras on the car. Well, and that's so much easier to install. Yeah, oh, a million times better. You, I can, so I can literally just follow that line and keep the front... In line. That is, and then you can see on this camera, there's no way you'd be able to do that on that back camera. That's just, no, you get no perception with the, a normal reverse cam. They're just sort of good to tell if you're going to back into a pole or something. Yeah, if something is directly behind you. Whereas this thing... Now you're going off into the... Yeah, I've gone wide a bit. How how far is that? Would Stick that out just to show the guys how far over you, you're hanging. Because it is a silhouette. <laughs> you can actually see. <laughs> see. It's come through the car a bit. Yeah, that will be accurate. I'm completely on the bigger rocks. I'm glad the calibration's gone well. All right. We're going to keep playing with this. Uh, I need to mount the, the module properly, but uh, we might do another full review on this maybe after a week or two of driving with it and just mm. give some more real, real life examples of it. But man, that's pretty easy. Finish the install, hide this stuff. And that should be, that should make it a lot easier now also to load up the trailer by yourself too. Absolutely. All right. Guys, I'll see you in a second. All right, so I've got to remount the box and sort out the number plate, but I'm about ready to end this video off. I just want to do one last test driving the car into the shed and just see how it positions itself against the door or the doorway. Okay. I mean, it's tight. It's tight. How? How can we see the doorway? What? It's like it's there's one camera. How does it see? And you can see here, the door is just going into the driver's door on the car. I mean, we're pretty close. And there's the front. That is insane. How has it done that? Guys, I'm pretty impressed with this camera. Like I said, I've got to mount the, I've got to hard mount the box. Oh, I'll go back. Is the image still there? Yeah, it saves the image. So I've got to hard mount the box, uh, and I think that's because it must use a G sensor as it stitches the images together. Um, yeah, hide that away, remount the number plate, and that's the install done. That is one of the easiest but most advanced reverse cameras I've ever played with. I'm pretty impressed with it. These are cheap. They're under 200 bucks, and you get that functionality. That is sick. And again, with the iBus. You can't see it now, but you get the PDC display that comes up. That is a wicked little camera system. I'm pretty stoked with that. And hopefully, there'll be no excuses for curbing wheels. Not that you should, anyway. Anyway, guys, I'll end off there. I hope this video wasn't too long. If you've got any questions about this, if you're looking at buying one, you've got any questions, let me know. It took about two to three weeks, I think, to get here. Um, and it is the A Toto. Pretty happy with it. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.